Oridar Paub, Dielchen Bayer Yaun, and thank you so much for the kind invitation um, for me to attend this year's Creative Wales event, which of course showcases the very best practice for our fantastic Welsh colleges and celebrates the achievements of our incredibly talented young people. I think it's fair to say, first of all, that the Welsh Government is utterly committed to supporting the arts and creative industries. We recognise the valuable contribution that both sectors make to society, to our health, to our economy, to our well-being. And we also recognise the importance of cultural education with realistic prospects of job opportunities afterwards. Insofar as the arts are concerned, it's often very difficult to quantify the economic benefits that they offer a nation, but what is indisputable is the value that they provide in terms of well-being and boosting people's self-esteem and confidence and health. And for that reason, I've set as an ambition the desire to see Wales become the most creative nation in Europe. Insofar as the creative industries are concerned, this is an area where we are particularly proud of the success in recent years. The creative industries in Wales are growing faster than any other part of the UK bar London, and it is the fastest priority sector of all sectors in Wales. I'm in no doubt about the importance of ensuring that young people and those already in the industry have the opportunity to consider and to pursue careers in the arts and the creative industries sectors. The £87.5 million Jobs Growth Wales project, which of course was launched in April 2012, was targeted at young people aged between 16 and 24 and has provided 15,000 young people with six month work experience opportunities. The outcomes have been incredible, with 80% of participants in the private sector strand going on to secure employment or an apprenticeship or further learning. And such was the success of Jobs Growth Wales in the previous round of structural funds that the successor programme is now underway. It's going to be open to all sectors, providing they can meet the eligibility and sustainability criteria. And I want as many arts and creative industries organisations to utilise Jobs Growth Wales as possible. Some of you will be aware of and indeed have contributed to a review of education and training for the creative industries in Wales, which has been undertaken over the last year on our behalf. Amongst other things, the review highlights the need to provide more mentoring opportunities for those already in the workplace, allowing them to work with the best and to gain the skills needed to compete in more senior roles. And the Welsh Government has supported two successful private pilot projects which have helped to deliver skilled professionals into creative roles such as prop masters, standby art directors, location managers and special effects that would not otherwise have been achieved. And the need to bring students and employers together is one key message that has come out of the review. And the National Skills Academy, which does just this, is highlighted as one area of good practice that we should promote and indeed build on. In these challenging times, the arts can play a vital role, both as a source of employment and as a source of enjoyment and learning for all as well, of course, as assist in the social and economic development of Wales. And in March of 2014, the Welsh Government published a report by Baroness K. Andrews, which focused on how cultural and heritage assets could be used more effectively and more strategically in order to help our most deprived communities. And a key strand of the report is about using culture and heritage and the arts to help young people and adults gain valuable employment skills. So in response to the report, the Welsh Government has commit, committed to explore ways to expand opportunities within the cultural sector and to work with the Sector Skills Council and others to drive forward cultural apprenticeships. Furthermore, in response to Professor Di Smith's report on arts in education in schools in Wales, we've launched Creative Learning Through the Arts, an action plan for the whole of Wales. And the plan aims to provide 
more opportunities for school children to engage with the arts and to support teachers and arts practitioners in developing their skills. Indeed, the Action Plan will fulfil our programme for government commitment to make arts for young people a central plank of the Arts Council Wales' future action plan in an agreed compact with the Department for Education and Skills. We're going to support both teachers and art practitioners to develop their creative skills through professional learning opportunities and to embed changes in teaching practice to generate sustainable impact. It's anticipated that approximately one third of schools in Wales will be able to participate in the LEAD Creative Schools programme over a minimum of two years. In addition, let's not forget some of our ancient monuments because of course they are an invaluable source of learning outside the classroom. And last year, more than 80,000 learning visitors to staffed CADU sites were organised. Facilitated education activities were also delivered to almost 9,000 learners at sites such as Caffili Castle and Plasmau and Blind Avon Ironworks. And I've placed a particular focus on CADU engaging with community first clusters as a priority for all of their community engagement programs. In addition, the traditional building skills bursary scheme was set up in 2006 to address skill shortages in the built heritage sector. And with support from the Skills for the Future programme, it's delivered apprenticeships in key skills needed in construction and in conservation. The current programme is due to be completed next month, by which time 180 apprenticeships will have been completed. And CADU's in-house conservation crafts team also supports apprentices, some of whom have been displaced from mainstream construction during the economic downturn. Equally, CADU also provides training opportunities for learners working towards attaining their MVQ Level 3 in heritage skills. We'll continue to use special education projects such as the Cultural Olympiad, Dylan Thomas 100 and the World War I Centenary projects to provide inspiration to learners for the development of creative and cultural skills. As I say, I want Wales to become the most creative nation in Europe. I do believe we have it in our culture to achieve such potential and by fusing together the arts, sport, education and health, I believe that we can achieve this goal. Dear Alcombe thank you very much.